No Country for Old Men isn't going to tell you what it's about. It leaves a lot open for you to view through your own lens. Today I want to discuss how the ending changes based on whether you consider Sheriff Ed Tom Bell or Anton Chigger to be the protagonist. We'll start with the Sheriff. Ed Tom narrates the film, and the movie opens with his thinking about the good old days, wishing he were back in those times rather than the corrupt present. I was sheriff in this county when I was 25 years old. Hard to believe. I always like to hear about the old timers. Never missed a chance to do so. You can't help but compare yourself against the old timers. Can't help but wonder how they'd have operated in these times. Sheriff Bell laments that these days he's often overmatched and ill-equipped to handle modern criminals. Maintaining law and order was easier, he believes, for the sheriffs and cops of the days gone by. He becomes involved in the deadly game of cat and mouse going between Anton Chigger, a bounty hunter, and Luol N. Moss, a veteran who finds himself in pursuit when he takes a large sum of money from a dying man in the desert. However, he finds himself out of his depth, as both Anton and Moss are highly skilled individuals. He's trying to save Moss from the psychopathic Anton, but his attempt is futile as Moss is shot. The sheriff ultimately fails in his attempt to either catch Anton or recover the money, and at the end of the film, he talks with his wife about two dreams he's had. All right then, two of them had both my father in them. It's peculiar. I'm older now than he ever was by 20 years. So in a sense, he's the younger man. Anyway, the first one, and he gave me some money. I think I lost it. Here he seems to be describing the feeling that he's failing in his responsibilities. In the dream, he loses some money, and in his real life, he's giving up on his duty to maintain law and order by ending his pursuit of Anton. Second one. It was like we was both back in older times, and I was a horseback, going through the mountains of a night. It was cold, and he rode past me and kept going. Never said nothing going by, just rode on past. He had his blanket wrapped around him and his head down. When he rode past, I seen he was carrying fire and a horn, the way people used to do. And I, I could see the horn from the light inside of it. And in the dream, I knew that he was going on ahead. And I knew that whenever I got there, he'd be there. And then I woke up. Carrying fire in a horn here can be seen as a metaphor for Anton's crimes. Sheriff Bell believes that Anton would return to his crime scene, and so he returns there to try to capture the criminal bounty hunter. His target is indeed there, but after breaking in, the sheriff still couldn't apprehend Anton, despite his many long years of experience. Bell's experience justifies the film title, No Country for Old Men, as Anton proves to be no match for Bell. The sheriff retires with his failure looming over him as the world moves on without him. Now let's pivot to examine the film's ending if we consider Anton Chigger to be our main character. Anton often feels more like a force of nature than a person. He's death, plain and simple, killing people or animals on a whim, sometimes offering his human victims a choice, sometimes not. We don't see his reasons for his choices, and that makes him all the more terrifying. After he kills Moss and acquires the money, we see him in the home of Carla, Moss's wife. She knows that he's insane through a previous meeting with Sheriff Bell, and tells Anton that he doesn't have any reason to hurt her. Anton, as we've seen before, offers her the chance to determine her own fate through a coin flip. She refuses, and then we see Anton walking away from the house, checking his boots. He rushes to his car, suspicious of two young boys on bicycles. He's hit by another car as he drives and his hand is fractured. He bribes the cyclists to ensure their silence about the accident, and we know he can't seek help because of his crimes. Though he survived this car crash, along with previous self-treated injuries, we can see the possibility that he may ultimately not make it. When we revisit the title of the film from this perspective, No Country for Old Men takes on an ironic tone, as the old man, Sheriff Bell, is in fact the only one to come out of this ordeal alive and healthy. The Coen brothers like to leave their films open to interpretation, and this one is no exception. It certainly deserved all the accolades it received, and will certainly be remembered through time as an excellent film.